YouTube, we got a big and exciting one for you today. Lots of mishmash pieces, a rare longa, cool ladies paddock, and these two boxes hold the two greatest sports watches ever designed, and these are the originals, so stay tuned. Let's go to a red box. I like red boxes, I like Cartier. The Santos, a bit of look to a 100-year-old classic, I mean, Size-wise, it's just right. With the braid fit, it just sits. I mean, I probably need to take half the braid fit out for my wrist, but just, it's, just, it's just a good look overall. And the key is it's affordable. You don't have to wait six years in line. You can buy it at a discount. And that's why they have been so popular. There's a lot of people out there that are into watches, sometimes tend to walk into boutiques and so on and so forth. What they'll do is they'll come in. And again, I'm talking about brands that don't sell over a list, right? If the line between the discount on the secondary and the primary is very, very small to the tune of 10, 20%. You'll find a lot of guys or girls that will walk into Cartier and actually buy the watch at full list, which is why the retail prices that they have are very, very approachable. And that's one of the things that I think makes them successful as well as Omega on certain models. And here's another version on a rubber strap. Look at the little screws inside the rubber. Like they didn't have to do that, but they did. And it just, I think it adds their overall look. The, the, the black bezel that overlays the stainless steel case on this chronograph. And again, this is a pretty big chronograph that is still sits well on the wrist. The rubber strap helps you hug the wrist because the lug system on the Santos is fairly large. I don't know if it's large or long, whatever you want to call it, but it protrudes a lot, right? So that adds overall a good eight millimeters to the size of the watch, yet it's still ergonomic? Yes. Ergonomic enough to wrap around even a smaller wrist like mine. I think the average wrist size is about seven inches maybe. That's what she said. But remember, it's not the size of your wrist that counts. It's what you put on your wrist. True. Did I just come up with the corniest joke ever? Yeah, but... About riding the wave? A very rare Alonga one with a blue dial in 38 millimeters. This one, somebody actually outfitted with a deployment class and normally came with a tank buckle. This is white gold. This is reference 101, da, 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 I don't remember. This is probably the rarest Longa one out there because this is a watch that was produced early on in Longa's career uh, and it was only produced for one year. So there's very, very few of these out on the market, which is why it's trading probably at almost triple its original retail price. These things are out there trading at about 65 grand. I believe when this watch came out, it was somewhere around the $20,000 price range retail. Longa collectors are recognizing the collectability of that particular model. They're holding on to them, especially with everything that's going on with Longa in terms of growth and popularity, cut down on production, all the stuff that I talked to you guys about, sleepers, blah, 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 blah. Someone just bought their first watch and it's a G-Shock. They said, don't make fun of me. I will never make fun of anybody. I would never make fun of anybody that buys a watch regardless of how much that watch costs. Because here's an interesting fact for you, a uh, little Breitling Super Ocean, two-tone, by the way, rubber strap, big thick watch, automatic movement, nice and clean price point watch. Again, a watch that sits very nicely on the wrist for its size, considering that it is a pretty large watch. But I will never make fun of, in fact, I will treat a person that goes out and buys a watch for themselves. You said G-Shock? Yeah. I will treat you the same exact way to a guy that's gonna go out there and buy himself a Skymoon Turbion for $3 million. And the reason for that is if you think about it, it's all relative. I always relate this to casino, although I'm not a gambler actually. I will sit down and play a little bit of poker, but that's a very slow burn and you tend not to lose or win a lot. That's just enjoyment. But it's the same thing as in a casino. For somebody's net worth, if somebody's net worth is in the gajillions of dollars, they're not gonna go and play at the dollar or five dollar blackjack table. Just not as exciting for them. Just like they probably, if they're into watches, they're not gonna go for a G-Shock, they'll probably start with something a little bit more expensive. Not, not necessarily start with a Skyman Turbion. Let's say they go out and buy themselves a hundred thousand dollar AP. For somebody who is, whose playing level is the five dollar blackjack table, that G-Shock that you bought is gonna bring you just as much joy as to the guy who bought himself his first watch, which happens to be $100,000. It's all relative. Same goes for cars, houses, et cetera, et cetera. So I always say, buy what you like, first and foremost, within the means that you can afford and enjoy it. It doesn't matter if it's a G-Shock or let's talk about an Omega. You have no idea how many guys are my clients now that started with a G-Shock or started with a, a cheaper Seiko or something that's less expensive. Oh look, this is probably one of those dark side of the moons, light side of the moons. It's one of the side of the moons. Dark side of the moon. And it says on here, we'll see you on the other side. Who said that? I'll, I'll let people in the comments say who said that. But I've said it numerous, numerous times for the money. 
some of the latest speedies out there, the dark side of the moon, the light side of the moon, the yellow side of the moon, whatever side of the moon, or just regular speedies, but look at that. You got a PVD case, you got a ceramic bezel, you got a semi-skeletonized dial on this thing. The yellow markers are just enough, not too much. You have uh, the big chronograph hand, the little chronograph hand, just a few touches around the tachymeter scale, or the word tachymeter or tachymetre, I guess is the right way to pronounce it. It's a lot of bang for your dollar. I've said it before, and there's a reason, that's the reason why Omega is still so successful uh, and will continue to be successful. And it also warrants that uh, price increase that everybody was bitching about, you know? Because I think they were underpriced in the market based on what you get with these watches. This looks like an IWC, is it? Oh, I was right. IWC went, uh, a lot of the companies went sort of eco-conscious when it comes to boxes, which is why you're seeing a lot of companies scale down the size of their boxes. The idea is less waste, which I am all for, to save the earth. The only thing is, it doesn't work because nobody in their right mind throws out box and papers for their watches. So therefore, I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish with that entire thing, although I take my hat off to them, but IWC follows suit as well. Oh, this is the, I think I'll wear this one, the Mojave Desert IWC. Now, of course, I am biased when it comes to IWC, not because it's my favorite brand, everybody knows I love AP, but IWC sponsors these guys. Mercedes team, F1, they're, you know, Lewis Hamilton, all those guys, they wear that stuff. I met a guy in Florida as I'm flying back at the lounge, came up, said, listen, I watch your stuff, I'm such and such, shows me a picture. He has the IWC, like the one that I have, the turquoise one, he has that watch signed by Lewis Hamilton. I was ready to sell my kidney for that. Like, just like, how much? <laughs> I think they did an excellent job with the Mojave Desert, an excellent job with the white version as well. Um, just, 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 the last thing I did, just, just, you know. Yes. Just good looking watch, right? A little bit more expensive entry level versus let's say the Cartier pieces I showed or the Omega, but still within reason to where people will still walk into the boutiques and buy these things at list. Kudos on this whole collection. They did this in a big pilot as well, which is really, really great. Okay, so 52, uh, 5267 lad, lad, lad. Ladies, Aquanaut. A watch that really hasn't changed in years upon years upon years with the exception of its size. The only difference is now is that some of these can become easily unisex due to the size. Like you can see this watch fits me really, really well. My wife has the 5067. Uh, which is uh, slightly smaller than this, but it looks exactly like this. Same strap, same everything. And you know what? Very popular watch. Uh, I see a lot of ladies wear these in the summertime. It's, it becomes their go-to summertime watch, if you will. Uh, also very, very popular. They do come in a lot of various other colors, obviously, but white and black predominantly still dominate the market because they're just I mean, black is the most versatile, obviously, but the white for the summertime. And the cool thing about this watch is that if you put this watch on a black strap for the winter, it still works because really, yes, you have a white dial, you have black markers on there. So both black and white straps with this watch will work tremendously well. So it does become very versatile. When you get into like the blues and some other colors, that's when it gets a little bit hairy. Yes, independents do come in here. Not at the rate as all the other stuff, but you know, we practice what we, pre what we preach. I do love independence. I love old independence with Max Buser being my favorite, i.e. MBNF. Probably Erwerk, second close favorite. Grubel Forze is up there in my top five. I do like Moser because Moser is a good entry way into the world of independence at an affordable level. Like a watch like this is under 10 grand. And obviously Moser's known for their dials. We talked about this before. They probably have the most beautiful dials out on the market period when it comes to various watches and various colors. But Moser is a brand we've been picking up a lot of because again, most independent brands out there, the entry into that world of collecting them is fairly expensive because a lot of those independent brands, the retail prices are very, very expensive, rightfully so, because you get a lot of bang for your dollar. And let's see what this Jaeger is. What's in here? Oh, it's a Reverso. Speaking of, speaking of easy entry into a market of a brand, Jaeger La Culture, Reverso. The most iconic watches out there, developed in 1931, I believe was the first one that was done. And this, we have travel time. So you have a regular watch here, shows you hours, minutes, seconds. 
and if you turn this around you have another time zone which gives you the day night indicator and a second time zone so you can quickly flip from Vegas to China from China to wherever else people have asked me multiple times to define or identify and say look what are these must have in the collection right you know if let's say money is no object or I shouldn't say that if I'm working with a budget per watch right a reasonable budget per watch not not millions right and I wanted to get from every brand one watch that I must have when it comes to Jaeger the Jaeger reverse show is an absolute must have in any collection oh we're just talking about the golf probably my favorite update to the offshore period and that is the golf watch as we like to call it due to its coloring there's nothing much I can say other than the fact that what they've done with this watch once again goes to prove what Asian has always said the Royal Oak is probably the greatest blank canvas out there when it comes to a watch in my personal opinion greater that to a Nautilus and hence in point look at this thing it's absolutely gorgeous I have these two special boxes and we talked about I said it starts with Gerald, ends with Genta, right? And I'm gonna open both of these. Drum roll, please. And what these are, are what I just dubbed to be the best blank canvas in the world, i.e. the Gerald Genta Royal Oak, designed in 1972. And this is an A serial. So this is the first series from the early 70s. And this is the second best blank canvas that Gerald Genta designed and that is the Nautilus designed in 1976 just short four years later this is the original 3700 however if you look closer on the dial it's also a double stamp dial by the retailer Bayer right and we talked about how much more special a watch becomes when it's double stamped because of its rarity and uh, I mean design overnight on a napkin designed to mimic nautical themes because the family loved boats uh, Gerald Genta knocked it out of the park at the time these came out. Nobody really cared because everybody was used to paying a couple of grand for a gold watch, not a stainless steel watch, the first sports, luxury sports watch ever created, i.e. the Royal Oak. This is about as rare as it gets. And Nina, what do we say? Hashtag rare is what we do. YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. This was a wonderful experience as always. Hope you enjoyed today's unboxing. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.